Good evening, everyone. Calling together the planning board meeting for what is today? Could we change the date? August tenth. Um, just a roll call. First, Larry Hassan. Here. James Sweeney. Here. Melinda Spinola. Here. And Tony Gonzalez is present. I have a new opening statement to read. <laughs> On March 29, 2023, Governor Healy signed into law a supplemental budget bill, which, among other things, further extends temporary provisions pertaining to the open meeting law to March 31st, 2025. The temporary provisions were first implemented by the executive order in March 2020 and subsequently enacted by Section 20 of Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, an act related to amending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency. Section 20 has amended several times to extend the expiration of the temporary provisions. Additionally, the old meeting law regulations governing remote participation Section 940 CMR 29.10 remain in effect, except where Section 20 specifically suspends certain requirements. In particular, when any or all public body members participate in a meeting remotely, the following requirements apply. At the start of the meeting, the chair must announce the name of the member or members who are participating remotely. Such information must also be recorded into the meeting minutes. All votes must be taken by roll call. Members of the public body must be clearly audible to each other and to members of the public at all times. When holding an executive session remotely, the public body must still take all required procedural steps for entering into executive session and open session at the beginning of the executive session. Each public body member participating remotely must state that no other person is present or able to hear the discussion at the remote location unless the public body has approved the presence of that individual. Okay. I'll try to work on short. I can see first. why you wanted to edit that. Yeah, we, 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 this is worse, but good evening again. I'll take it. I'll, I'll take a wing, swing at it. Please, thanks. Um, all right. Uh, just go through the agenda before we approve last month's meeting minutes. Well, not last month, June's meeting minutes. Um, we have co continuances for 262 Winter Street, Kent Estates and 1315 Main Street Teen Challenge. So these will not be heard tonight, they are continued. On the agenda, we're gonna review the acceptance of the meeting minutes from June 6, 2023. We have a couple ANRs. We have um, first a preliminary subdivision for Zero West Street. The applicant is Aldeglesia Andrade with representative ET Engineering. And then we have 516 Pleasant Street, which is a site plan review. Applicant is JJNMK Realty LLC. Representative is Bob Regal. Okay. I think I covered that piece. Uh, is there a motion to accept the minutes from June 6, 2023? Motion to accept uh, June 6 meet, uh, meeting minutes. Second. Okay, roll call, James Sweeney? Yes. Larry Hassan? Yes. Yolanda Spinola? Yes. Tony Gonzalez, yes. Thank you. Uh, next up, Evan, do you wanna take the lot releases? Uh, yeah, sure, there's a bunch of lots up for release in Amelia Estates. Um, we're looking to release lots one through eight plus lot 15. Um, we've received all of the confirmation from DPW that the work required to release these is done. So um, there's no issues with them. They're ready to be released. Okay. Is there a motion and do they have to say lot one, two, three, or can they say lot one through eight? Yeah, you can do them all as one motion. Okay. Motion to release lots one through eight. And lot 15? And lot 15. Okay. Second. All right, roll call, James Sweeney? Yes. Larry Hassan? Yes. Yolanda Spinola? Yes. Tony Gonzalez, yes. All right, thank you. Okay, our first uh, representative, ET Engineering, 40 West Street. So this should be a zoo, but I don't see him yet. So maybe we should go to the next one. Yes, I'm going to go check email to make sure he's 
see if he sent anything. I, I spoke to him yes. on the phone about 30 minutes before we left the office today. So he's aware. I told him it was he was the first one on. Ah, uh, here he is. I got an email. He said running. he... I can't he find the link for tonight's tonight. meeting. Ah, okay. Hold on. <laughs> is Bob Regal uh, ready? Um, Isaiah, could you give us through the link? Um, yeah, he. Um, I did confirm with him. I did speak to him also 30 minutes. He had, um, I did show him where the agenda was. I'm not sure. Um, I can send it to him again. Thank you. Could you please? And then um, Bob is ready to present if you want to go ahead with that. That'd be great. Good I'm going to promote him. Good to a panelist. Evening, Mr. Bob Riggle. Good evening, Bob. Uh, good evening. Uh, um, my name is Bob Rigo. I'm with Riverhawk Environmental, and I'm here tonight uh, representing um, the applicant for uh, site plan review for a project at 516 uh, Pleasant Street in Brockton. I was wondering, would it be better if I, could I share my screen to show the, the plan? Please. Please do. That'd be great. Oops. Sorry, a little delay here. Okay. Um, again, uh, Bob Rigo with Rock Environmental. Um, this uh, this site is a, a existing um, developed property at the corner of Pleasant Street and Wheeler Avenue. It's an existing convenience store that sells, I believe, sells beer and wine currently. Um, the site area is approximately twenty seven thousand three hundred and twelve square feet. It's bordered to the north by Pleasant Street, the, the east by Wheeler Ave, and there's some um, residential properties on the um, all the remaining sides. Uh, there's the, the three properties around here. Um, currently, there's 21 parking spaces that serve the facility. Um, there's there's a, a paved parking area around the building, a dumpster pad location over here, um, and then a grassed area. In, in the rear here with a couple of mature um, trees. The um, Right now there's three curb cuts. There's two that exist off Pleasant Street and there's one that exists uh, off Wheeler Ave. And we're proposing, is it uh, <coughs> a sewer that comes in off Wheeler Ave, existing water which comes in off Wheeler Ave and existing gas which comes off Wheeler Ave. Um, and then overhead electric, which comes in off from a pole up here like that also. Uh, there's currently no stormwater management. All the water basically sheds uh, from the parking lot and the building, um, well, from the parking lot, excuse me, off to the, to the east. Uh, the building is collected in a uh, roof uh, drain infiltration dry well, which is located um, east of the building. Um, so we're proposing to, um, they're proposing to uh, add an addition to the um, to the existing building. The proposed addition is about three thousand one hundred and five square feet, which would bring the total building uh, square foot to um, four thousand nine hundred and fifty square feet. Um, the general idea is to um, move most of their operations into the new addition and then use the existing uh, building area for, for storage. Um, this current, we, we're um, proposing um, 22 parking spaces around the building, um, two handicapped um, 
accessible again accessible um, handicapped spots in the front of the building um, and then maintaining the existing two curb cuts off pleasant street um, but we are proposing to to um, close the curb cut on wheeler ave uh, to gain some additional parking over there and to kind of limit the, the confusion at this um, intersection, that all those curb cuts are close to the um, to the current intersection there at Wheeler Road and Pleasant Street. Um, in terms of utilities, we're we're maintaining pretty much all of the um, existing sewer, water, electric, and gas utilities on the property. We are proposing to add. Um, um, add stormwater controls to the um, the facility. So we're going to add a series of, of catch basins, which are shown in orange on this plan. So we're going to add um, one, two, three, uh, four, five catch basins. Uh, those catch basins will all be deep sump catch basins with, with hoods. Um, they'll lead to a um, proposed um, hydrodynamic separator, which will go into a subsurface infiltration beneath the parking area. And um, those these proposed controls will uh, mitigate any of the increased impervious area and um, the implementation of those controls will meet the mass DP stormwater management standards and the um, Brockton um, stormwater management regulations. And um, we've provided um, Basically, snow storage would be at the two ends of the, of the parking areas um, over here and over here. There's still a significant portion of um, grass area and landscape within the rear of the property. For lighting, um, there'll be uh, there's some existing lights in the parking lot, um, but we're proposing to um, sort of proposing to basically um, replace those lights. Um, and and just achieve um, a, a little better lighting at the site. Um, there'll be dark sky compliant, and there'll be um, no spillover to the to the abutting properties, uh, especially the, uh, the the residential properties on the two sides over here. Um, I guess um, that's pretty much it. Um, except for during construction, you know, we'll provide erosion control um, when when the pavement is um, ripped up to put in the some of the stormwater controls. Um, there'll be a there'll be a construction entrance provided and um, some hay bales uh, put along the perimeter on the downgraded side to prevent the erosion. And that is everything, I believe. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rigo. Uh, did you address the quantity of cypress trees listed on on the plant key to match the number of trees to be planted? Um, I believe I did. Um, I'd have to double check, but I believe I did. I can actually go to the to the landscaping plan, but um, appears like maybe I did not. Um, so yeah, that that would have to be. Where this says quantity, what is the is there an actual number? Um, yeah, I, I think if you go up, Bob, this is the fire tur turning radius. They'll, it'll tell you it'll have the legend on the left what okay. the symbols for the landscaping means. And I think on there you have um eight of whatever those little blue ones are. Yep. Okay. I think you got it. It's like an early er, earlier page. I'm not finding it. But... Keep going up. Go up yeah. more. More. Okay. There you go. Oh, that was it. That was it. There you ah, go. There we go. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Over here. Yeah. So you got eight there, but there's really 25. You just have to change that eight to yes. match the number that's actually on the plan. That's all. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And there were during during the discussion with the um, departmental site plan review, we did add um, a few extra. Um, trees, uh, shade trees over in this area uh, of the property. And that, that number also did not get updated. So I apologize, I'll, I'll update that at the same time. And we added additional uh, rear and cypress along the property line for better screening for the abutters. So if I'm following correctly, it needs to be changed from eight to 25 on the key? That's correct. Okay. And then the, um, 
the uh, skyline honey locust also uh, needs to be increased from um, one to three, too. We added two more of those. So I apologize for that. So if without changing this commercial building and the three entrances and exits to two, we already have a huge traffic jam right in that area. It gets bottlenecked. I mean, at two o'clock, it's not even rush hour, four or five o'clock. It's all day long. Um, during, I guess, during tech review, was this considered? any consideration given to the traffic in this area? Why would we close off the driveway on Wheeler, Wheeler Ave when people, customers could come on and take a right instead of going, adding more congestion on Pleasant Street? Guess it did not come up. Yeah, it did, it did, it did not come up as a, as a concern during tech review. Um, they they would have to now exit out to, to go right on the wheel on the wheel right now. That's correct. And it, it's already a nightmare. Yeah, it would eliminate some of the people who are turning on the wheel around and and cross, you know, people exiting on the wheel to go then on the Pleasant Street. Um, but it, there wasn't a detailed traffic evaluation done on this project. And um, Madam Chair, there was no. Um... Uh, opposition from um, public safety. Um, I'm surprised because I'm often caught in this mess and it's uh, pretty bad. So if you close that off to make parking, is it, do you not have enough parking everywhere else? Is that why you need to do this? Um. Probably could have made it work with um with keeping that with keeping that entrance. We would have to find two more spaces on the site. It, it, um, it is kind of difficult. I'm su surprised, um, Mr. May, because remember we were doing the Cumberlands over on Oak Street, and we made sure that you know that road's very busy, and we made sure there was an exit on, on the Walmart side, and this area is actually more congested than Oak Street. So I'm concerned about that driveway being closed. Well, the nice thing about the the Cumberland on uh, Oak Street is that it it um, exits onto the Walmart driveway that has a traffic signal. And here, there is no traffic signal on um, on Wheeler. Right. So, but I'm thinking cars are going to come out and at least go right if they are going to go, you know, to the south side of Brockton or even the west side. They can take a right out of the driveway not everybody's going towards the mall or up pleasant street towards maine and given your the size of the addition it's you know you needed to increase the number of parking spaces and this is a way that they were able to do it and they've put their um, water detention underneath that or infiltration underneath that area where the curb cut would have been why would they need to increase parking spaces when the current building is going to be used for storage? Uh, because the zoning ordinance requires a, uh, a certain number of spaces per square foot. It doesn't matter what those uses are. It's still. Mm. That's too bad. Okay, thanks. Um, any other questions from the board? Yeah, Madam Chair, I do. Um... Bob, would you mind bringing us back up to the front what you have on the screen right now? There's four red circles and it says four, was it DM? What are the, what are those? Uh, those are, are Japanese boxwoods. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Japanese boxwoods. Okay. And just on the design, why did we cut it back into a slimmer area of mulch? Uh, that's just just to provide an aisle of twenty four feet with behind um, the park. It's space. already twenty four feet, but why did you go skinnier on the mulch area? Not, I'm not quite sure um, if I understand the question. Um, so you know, you got the, the floor. 
this area. Those are plantings, right? Yeah. And if you go farther right, then all of a sudden it skinnies down to a slimmer area. Oh, of here, right here, there's two right. parallel spaces. All right, so there's all right, so there's a parking spot right there. Yeah, there's two parking. There's two parking. Uh, okay. Yeah. And, th and those are kind of um, existing. The existing plan includes, um, well, includes that that skinny strip is maintained. We actually got a little wider with the strip over in this section. But How many total spots do you have? 22. Proposed. And what's required? 22. 22, so you have exactly the number of spots that you need. Yes. Could, can can we consider making one of these an entrance and one of them an exit rather than two ca cars trying to exit both parking driveways at the same time, adding to the congestion? I mean, I mean, we could do that through through arrows and and signage on the, on the ground. Um, I don't think it would be a bad idea. I, I'm not sure how, you know, in practice, I guess people would get used to it. Um, but yeah. we could, we could the, add some. The, the ones that follow the rules, yes. I'm I'm right. thinking the one more toward the one towards Wheeler would be the exit and the entrance here, right? Uh, an exit. The yeah, so would be come the in entrance. and circulate this way. Yeah, correct. Yes, yeah. they would go yeah. out towards the Wheeler side and in because this is the crazier area, especially where that. Right. Road jumps out on the yeah. Pleasant Street over there. Yeah. What is that yeah. street over there where the water depot is? Yeah, that. this cross prospects uh, maybe. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it is. It is a busy road, and, and so go in on that driveway and exit on the other one. We can we can do that. And Madam Madam Chair, uh, if I may, you suggested. Uh, that other one be as far south on Wheeler as possible. Is that what you? The the one to exit the driver would be the one closest to Wheeler. Oh, uh, oh, okay. On the on a uh, okay, gotcha. Because coming in, that'd be easier. I mean, that's I can't see cars dumping out into. It's just a mess already. Now, uh, just you know, thinking out loud here, what if you took the westerly one? I'm sorry, the easterly one on uh, near underneath where it says street and Pleasant Street. Block that and put an exit farther down on Wheeler. That way you don't have two on same stretch of congested road. And then it, it builds a queue up on Wheeler. Because Wheeler is going to have traffic coming and going too. So you really have one, two, three spots where traffic is coming and going. That's three different ways that people are crossing in and out instead of maybe putting the um, the out and in on the, you know, basically alongside the building. And it funnels it down to only two ins and outs on Pleasant Street. Are you following? Mr. Regal? Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, just be, just because that street is an absolute mess. That's all. Sure, sure. Understood. Um, yeah, in order to do that, we would probably have to have... Um, trying to think with it, with the interaction with those parallel spaces. Um, if we then had two two spaces tucked in the corner and then an exit, um, get maintain basically, I'm just gonna maintain the existing uh, curve cut or we'll try to. Oh, and close this one. Right, close that one. And then you yeah. have ins and outs close by, but drop that down farther towards where it says Wheeler on the street as far as lower as, as you can go that yeah. way if you get more cars coming out there's a little bit of a queue line instead of dumping it right onto the intersection yeah just for for traffic circulation get around i mean it'd be it'd be easier certainly to maintain the existing curve cut and go out here 
and then, and then close this one off. Um, if that would be ex acceptable to the board, you know, we could we could reconfigure that. I think I you got people think... coming back out of there, and you're going to get slammed by people taking a right. Yeah, that that was that was one of the that was one of the issues with closing it off was it is close and exit close to the intersection of people taking a right on that road. So that's why we originally closed it, and and it provided the space for the park. I, so what's the opposition from to bringing that lower again? So to bringing that towards... Uh, it's not really. It's just it's construction of a, a closing an existing curb cut that exists already there now, and then reopening a curb cut over here. So changing the grades and and and, and making it work, and then circulating the traffic back around behind the parking. I think it's worth it for traffic safety in that area. Thank you, Jim. Um, Bob, anything? Uh, no, no, that, that, you know, that's reasonable. I, I, I get the point. So, um, Madam Chair. Yes. To, to discourage people going out the wrong way. Um, I would think that we would want to, uh, tighten up that, uh, uh curb cut and make it, you know, 12 feet instead of the 23 and a half or yeah whatever is there now i can't see the plan small so 12 feet yes well, ma'am 12 feet um exit and um that direction down wheeler what what direction is that rob uh, it's south, That's south. south. Okay. so in terms of the 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 reconfiguring of the curb cuts, are we talking about closing this curb cut or maintaining yes. this curb cut? And Close it. Closing it. it. Okay. Close it. So you have your entrance entrance on Pleasant Street and your exit on the southern south side of Wheeler. Okay. So you wouldn't could we could we keep both these as both entry and exit? Um, I think I think that's reasonable both coming and going, but to limit down in that short stretch of street three ins and outs within a very short distance. Right. So so comes an absolute keep cluster. This one to maintain an existing width for in and out traffic, and then close this one and and put provide a new one down here and close this. One. I think that's wise because if you get people that don't want to come in that way, they'll take Wheeler and go in that way anyways. Correct, correct, yeah. And if you want to make that a, a 12 foot single out only, um, I think that would uh, improve uh, or keep you from losing an extra parking space. Oh, I see, on, 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 the, wheel, on the wheeler side? On the wheeler side, yes. Yeah, well, okay, I, I can look at that, maybe talk to our traffic consultant about the, the best configuration near this intersection, um, but maybe 18 foot wide somewhere in between um, the, the 12 and 24, um, and, the, and then and then have the area for the parking. But it might it might require kind of shortening up this. Where I know it will shortening up this. Um, mm -hmm. But we can also extend it a, a skinny strip along along here and try to implement some plantings in, in that area and then just so, so a thin strip of boat uh, I'm not sure how wide along uh, the back side of the curb on on Pleasant Street and, and move the opening down here somewhere uh, thank you mr. Regal Larry Yolando anything madam chair it's Larry yes um, so um, Thank you for these plans, Mr. Rigo, because I do think the applicants, the current owners, have done a pretty good job over there with what that used to be and what it is now. Um, on the proposed addition, is that a two-story or is that just a one-story, 3,100 square foot building? Uh, single story. Single story. So that's just all storage. Um, 
in that building? Is it office space or anything else in there? Bathrooms or anything? Or um, you know, I I believe the client is uh the applicant is on the line. Um, maybe if you could raise his hand, they could he they could speak to to the use better. Um, I don't know if you can see him. Who is the app applicant? Um, it's a series of letters, but yeah. um, J J N M K Realty. Right. Yeah. Oh, you don't have an actual name. No, I do. I well, do there is. It's Bot. It looks like Bot Basho Basho by Patel. There you go. Patel it is. Yes. Yeah. Is Mr. Patel here? Uh, but the owner of the project, if you could, uh, if you're online, please uh, use the raise your hand function at the bottom of the screen. And I think somebody's coming on. Yep. Yep. Okay, you should be able to speak now. Yes, uh, speaking. Yes. Uh, good evening, Mr. Patel. Hi, good, uh, good evening, dear. How are you? Good evening. We're good. Um, Larry had a question for yeah. you. Yeah, I don't know if you heard my question, sir. I just wanted to know, in the proposed addition, it's a one-story building. Um, is there anything else in there besides storage, or is it just storage, or is there bathrooms, office space? Is it? I'm also looking at the plan. Is it going to be connected to the existing building as well i don't see any kind of access no there is a, there is no office or uh, there is a bathroom right now where we can remove it if we, we can so there is a bathroom in the proposed addition uh the storage room yeah storage room okay yeah. i mean i'm assuming a half bath uh yeah okay other than that it's just all storage all storage yeah okay no, that was my question because it's a, it's a big addition. I mean, it fits. I know we. I looked at this uh, at Tech Review. I again, I, I appreciate what you've done so far with the property and how you've maintained a lot of the things around there. And I, I believe most of the abutting neighbors are happy with it too. So that that was my only question. Oh yeah, all my neighbors are happy. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Just to clarify that though, Mr. Patel, uh, the bathroom is in the existing building, correct? The storage building that we talking about, uh, Bob Rico. Yeah, what's there now has a bathroom. Without the addition, you have a bathroom now in the st in the liquor store. Um, uh, sorry, say that again. Uh, sorry. The current building now. What's yep. there today? Is is there a bathroom there today? Yes. Yeah. So it's not in the addition, Larry. It's in the current building. That's going to be storage and a bathroom and whatever else he wants to use it for. Okay. I again, I, I misunderstood that. I thought there was also going to be a half bath in the addition. Right or wrong? Are you adding a bathroom to the addition, or you just mm -hmm. have one bathroom? No, just one bathroom. We don't adding nothing here. Nothing. Okay. All right. That's even better than I thought. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thanks. Any other questions from the board? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, I have a question. Um, in regards to the waste management of the facility, if that's changing um, when it comes to like, um, like yeah, the configuration of the new parking spots, I, I do know like there is uh, two waste uh, bins, like larger dumpsters uh, the, uh, near the old existing building, but is, is the location of that changing is um and it, it, it do they are they reconfiguring things with that at all uh, th there's a slight uh reconfiguration of the of the dumpster area it's it's being pushed back um slightly and and um it's similar in size there's uh it'll be uh screened on on basically four sides and then there's an existing fence which runs along the property back here and where 
also adding a bunch of um, plantings in between the dumpster area and the uh, residential property to the south and the fence. Thank you. And uh, do you have any plans to add any like smaller bins for customers to use too, or uh, oh, is that something that's already been in existence? In other words, like uh, receptacles out by the doors and stuff like that for customers. That type of thing. Okay, great. Yeah, so those will be maintained. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So, is this open for public comment? Yes, ma'am. If there is anyone who would like to speak um, about this project, please use the raise your hand icon at the bottom of your screen and we will open up your microphone. Again, if there's anybody who would like to speak about this project, please use the raise your hand icon at the bottom of your screen and we will open up your microphone. And Madam Chair, I do not see anyone wishing to speak about the project at this time. All right, and that motion is closed. Is there a motion? Uh, Madam Chair, so what would our um, changes be on, on, a, on a motion? So um, um, the number of trees from 8 to 25 on the- Madam budget. Chair? Yes? I would suggest that um, since the next planning board meeting is just around the corner, um, he might want to revise these plans and just come back at the next meeting. So we'll, we'll opt to continue till next meeting. Yes, I, I would recommend that. Yes. Okay. Are you okay with that, um, Mr. Rigo? I Mr. am. If the applicant is, but but I am. I, I think it'd be a good idea to to incorporate those changes and um, give okay. the, the members of the planning board an opportunity to look at them and make sure it's it's what, what everybody's looking for. Okay. Motion to continue to the next meeting. Second. Okay, roll call. James Sweeney? Yes. Larry Sahn? Yes. Orlando? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you right. for uh, working is, with us, both you, Mr. Rigo and Mr. Patel. Okay. When is Thank the next you. meeting? Just for September 6th. September 6th. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay. Next up. Uh, ET Engineering for Zero West Street Preliminary Subdivision. And that is a zoo. Yeah, he's correct. On his way oh, yeah, he's, he's on, on his way over. Here he, here he is. Good evening, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board. Good evening, uh, Mr. May Evans and our uh, road. Thank you so much for, and as you, thank you for indulging us. And uh, excuse my office background. We we had flooding about three weeks ago, and I'm still waiting for the insurance adjusters to show up and uh, give us the uh, green light to start the uh, repair work. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry to hear and see that. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. So, um, um, do I have the okay to share my screen? Or? Yes. Okay. And uh, Mr. May might have to come to rescue. <laughs> <laughs> or, or Evan. Uh, let's see. Give you a second and then I'll jump on. Okay. Let me see here. Get my uh oh wait a minute. Oh. All right. I'll take over a zoo. I got you. Okay. Is, is that soon? Okay. We see the plan, yes. Do you see it? Oh, okay. I thought I was opening mine. Okay, great. Um, thank, thank you. 
back to Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Evan, if you can scroll to the top. Uh, so the, um, uh, the uh, top right, right there. So the property is so we're look right at the uh, corner on the west side of West Street, at the corner of uh, Palmer Street and uh, West Street. It features a uh, very substantial frontage on West Street and uh, frontage on uh, Palmer Street uh, in excess of uh, 236 feet. Uh, what we would like to do, uh, Evan, if we can scroll to the bottom there, is uh, divide, subdivide the property of, uh, to uh, two house lots. You can see that uh, these are uh, fairly good sized lots, um, 13,000 uh, square feet, pretty much. Would, uh, we try to split it evenly. Um, with uh, each showing a frontage of uh, in excess of 100 feet. Uh, the one to the left will be what I call lot one, will have a, a 120 something feet of frontage. And then the one to the right, which I call lot number two, will have a 119 feet of uh, frontage. And these are, uh, <clears throat> these, uh, are consistent actually uh, in the neighborhood, most of the uh, lands uh, 7,500 square feet, 8,500 square feet. And there are a couple that are 10,000 and 11,000 square feet respectively. Uh, so this will be, this will definitely not uh, derogate from the intent of the uh, uh, bylaw in the city. As you know, we used to have to go to the Board of Appeals first, uh, but uh, I think uh, the, a few years back, uh, just prior to COVID, uh, the city uh, changed uh, the process so that we go to the planning board. The idea is that the planning board is more suited for subdivision reviews. And then uh, based on the outcome of the uh, planning board of, uh, review, we can go to the Board of Appeals. Uh, public utilities are available to boot lots. Each one will have its own uh, water, sewer, gas, uh, and uh, in keeping with the uh, city's uh, new uh, stormwater ordinance, uh, we have designed uh, recharge systems uh, that uh, will take care of a uh, roof uh, drainage on each lot. And that will be reviewed uh, through your DPW. And so uh, we have uh, uh, proposed a few trees. You can see those little green circles um along west street and along palmer street th exactly uh, uh to provide our, our vegetation in front and uh all boot lots will meet the required all the required setbacks side rear uh, um, and uh, front so we are not going to be looking for any reduction in the uh, setbacks so i think uh this is a fairly uh, neat plan, um, and uh, we'll uh, uh, ask the board of uh, support. And um, and I've been told so many times to talk very briefly. My friends tell me to talk briefly. My wife tells me to talk briefly. That I like to hear myself talk. So I think I'm done. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um, it says here the lot line separating the two proposed lots must be straightened. Did you address that? Uh, we can do that. I, uh, I don't have that information, but that will not be a problem to uh, do that. Uh, the reason, uh, but just so you know, the that lot line uh, that is uh, in concern, uh, a concern to the uh, staff. Uh, the reason I did that was simply to try to balance the square footage of the lots. But yes, I can straighten the lot line without affecting the setbacks that we are proposing. And I did do some research and validate that the frontage is actually more than the other houses in the area. And I drove by on my way back from Market Basket and looked at this area closely and 
also looking at the plan in front of me, it does match with the other houses and the character of the neighborhood. Any questions from other board members? Yeah, Madam Chair, if I could. Uh, hi, Azu, how are you? Good evening, sir. Uh, so would you have any objection with adding more plantings along West Street, just kind of filling that in a little bit more, just with maybe three more on West Street and maybe one more on that corner in between the two? I don't think that would be any problem. I think I think it would be a, a little bit better um, sure. with a, a residential use right there. Gives it a little bit better of a buffer on such a busy street. Yep. Thank you. Yes, sir. Anytime. Uh, Larry or Yolando? All set. Thank you. Yeah, I'm all set. So, um, thank you. And um, is this open to public, Mr. May? Yes, ma'am. Uh, anyone from the public who wish to speak on this item, please use the raise your hand icon at the bottom of your screen. Again, if you hover uh, your cursor at the bottom, you'll see a menu pop up and there's an icon that looks like a hand raised. So if you'd like to speak, please do that now and we will open up your microphone. And Madam Chair, I do not see anyone raising their hand at this time. Okay, is there a motion? Motion to approve with uh, four more plantings, three along the West Street line, at the West Street side, one more along the West Street corner uh, in straightening out the, um, the lot line. Second. Roll call, James Sweeney. Yes. Larry Song? Yes. Melando Spinola? Yes. Tony Gonzalez, yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I appreciate you indulging me. And uh, uh, we will get together with uh, Mr. Sears and uh, and then uh, get the uh, exactly the way they want the uh, line straightened, and we'll do that. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you. Forgive not. And uh, well, Evan, can you can you send me an email and say that Azu, you were very very brief, so I can show it to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> it's recorded. <laughs> but you're still talking. Good night. Okay. <laughs> Have a good night. <laughs> if there's no other business, uh, is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? Motion to adjourn. Second. Roll call. James Sweeney. Yes. Larry San? Yes. Yolanda Spinola? Yes. Tony Galvez, yes. All right. Good night, everyone. Bye, guys. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Good night, Rob. Bye-bye. <laughs>